Hello, darkness, my old friend. Welcome back to another Future Garage vlog. Um, today we're at, we're going to be working on an actual race car, not uh, minor Zach's little podunk projects. Uh, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Dave and let him introduce this car to you guys. All right. So what we're working on today is a, a 2001 Acura Integra Type R. It's a dedicated race car, still streetable, tagged, titled, insured. But uh, the owner is a good friend of mine who uh, tracks it a lot. A whole lot and uh, he's got countless countless hours um, road racing this car uh, he's got a couple of real sponsors uh, as you can see on the car he's he's sponsored by kilo brand energy drinks um, he picks up a lot of contingencies from Hoosier and numerous other companies because he does well and um, he's, he's a serious racer but be, that being said even serious racers make um, fatal mistakes and get distracted and I believe that's what happened to, to the owner of this car. He was at his last race with the car and uh, passing a, uh, a competitor. And in the process of, of going for a 3-4 shift, he was also waving as he got a point by from uh, another car. And in my opinion, in, in the process of the wave and pulling the 3-4 shift, um, he wasn't concentrating 100% on the shift and he grabbed second gear instead of fourth. Um, I think the red limit on this car is somewhere between, somewhere around 8,500 RPM. And uh, that's where he was when he was pulling that shifter around about. And uh, grabbed second gear, the car engine braked real hard and just shut off. The owner said he saw no, heard no major noises. Nothing happened, just the car shut off. So, um, he brought the car to me about a week later, it's still not starting, and uh, I do what any mechanic does, start, start checking for spark, and uh, no spark. So I'm on a, on, uh, automatically thinking, all right, all he's gonna need is a, uh, is a distributor, because it does happen, you know, uh, igniters fail, especially when you put them under a load. And I figured at the same time, I'd go ahead and do a compression test and uh, discovered no compression at all in uh, uh, cylinder number two. So that's where we're at right now. The owner is not sure what he wants to do about this engine. He would love to try and uh, salvage this engine, salvage the block at the very least. It may need some sleeves, but uh, I've already pulled the oil pan off of it, uh, discovered catastrophic piston failure. You can also see down in the um, spark plug hole that there's a, there's a big hole in it, in the uh, piston. So, tonight's job, the owner wants to know how far bad this motor is. So I'm gonna get the cylinder head pulled off for him and that'll allow him to make the decision, can we salvage the block and still have it be a numbers matching Integra Type R? Um, or do we have to buy another motor and uh, lose a little bit of value on the car? So that's tonight's job, pull the cylinder head, See how bad it is. Oh, there's, see this car has all its original parts and things, and you don't see this stuff <laughs> on everybody else's car. They just throw these parts away. At one point in time, my Integra was, nope, never mind. <laughs> not this clean, not even, I don't even think it's close. It was similar, but not this close, not this clean. So this, this Integra looks like it doesn't get driven a whole lot. I mean, just, the level of cleanliness is something you just don't see. It looks like it's a car that really doesn't get driven a whole lot. But it does. A lot. And hard. On the track. But it also gets very, very well maintained. And cleaned. Thoroughly. Okay, so I don't think that Joey would even pull the tire off. I think that he would get in there with, the, with a certain tool that he knows fits absolutely just right and uh, detention it because the less amount of work you have to do, the better when uh, dealing, the less you have to take apart, also the less can break. So I try and think about what would Joey do a lot. WWJD, what would Joey do? Joey taught me just about everything I know about mechanicing uh, for years. 
And so you got to think about this is the guy that'll change a camshaft in between passes. That's what he did at the uh, yep on Saturday. So what would Joey do? How would he get it apart? How quick can Joey take this apart? We're all the time comparing times on a job will come into work that's he doesn't work with me. He works at a different shop. He works at Al's Chevron on uh, Eagle Parkway. But he'll we'll all the time compare. He'll say, yeah, I got a Honda Odyssey came in today for a timing belt. And he's like, yeah, I got it done in about two and a half hours outside on the ground. I'm like, well, how, do, how do you do that? It takes me four and a half hours inside on a lift with all, all the tools in the world. So if you're constantly thinking, what would Joey do? You're not gonna slow down. You're gonna get things done in a hurry. <laughs> That's really the way to go. What would so, Joey do? What would Joey do? He would do exactly what I'm doing right now. He would get in, don't even worry about taking the wheel off. I just detensioned, actually I loosened the tensioner bolt and then I pushed on the belt on the back, which goes around the water pump and then it hits the tensioner and that allows the tensioner to slide. Now I have some slack and you just come in here and undo the belt. That's it. He could really benefit and I'm only saying it because I'm complaining about having to remove the intake manifold. Anybody that's removed the intake manifold off of a stock Honda knows that paper gasket sticks to everything. And it's just, it's a fight. But he could really benefit from whether the Delrin, um, Honda, or any other company, but those Delrin or plastic intake manifold gaskets. They're a little bit thicker, but they're made of a type of plastic that does not transmit the heat as bad or at all from the cylinder head to the intake manifold. So the intake manifold stays a lot cooler. It's one of the few parts out there, you know, everybody thinks they can just bolt up an intake and exhaust and ooh, horsepower. Well, those things really should be tuned around. You can put that gasket on there and not have to tune around it whatsoever and it will make horsepower because you have a colder intake charge. Simple as that. Fancy. So, and, I, and again, I've seen that on the internet. You know, I've seen it on the forums. People touting it as this, oh, you know, yeah, it keeps things cooler and you'll get more power. But I'd like to see someone measure that. I've yet to see that. One off and on. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. Uh, I'm sure that people have done it. But again, that stock gasket, say you wanted to do that as a test, you put this thing on the dyno. Okay, now I'm going to put that Delrin thing on there you're gonna spend some time scraping that gasket off of yeah. it. It's a big, it's not an easy job. It always sticks to, you know, the worst side or half of it <laughs> peels off to both sides. Mm -hmm. And you're in there with all kinds of tools and razor blades and, and scrapers to, uh, to get that all undone. Looks like the camshafts survived. And there's an O-ring that goes around the dowel pin. And I've bought numerous VTEC cylinder heads to do LS VTEC swaps and things. And we're taking people's apart and no dowel pin and no O-ring. This is very important to oil pressure and location <laughs> in the cylinder head. Well, it's, as Lucas just put it, super raining outside, so I have to talk a lot louder. And we're in a metal building with no insulation. Um, we know this motor had catastrophic failure uh, from me looking up through the oil pan and through spark plug holes. But also, now that I've got the camshafts out, the cams are not, at, of course, uh, putting any pressure on valves or valve springs. And you can come in here and look at the heights being similar, similar, and then one way down and one way down here. So obviously this cylinder is our problem child um, as far as it dropping a valve or doing whatever it did when it failed. Oh boy. 
Oh, what's that? The pistons all have debris in them. It's at, it's embedded in them. Those are that's pieces of ring land right there. Well, maybe the block is salvageable with some sleeves. Sure. I need to get a look at the crankshaft. Oh man, we're just picking up. There's a ring, piece of a ring. Gee, ah. Uh. That's something else. Well, the rod bearing still has crush. Crush means that it'll hold itself in. Uh, a worn out motor that's just really been beat up um, won't have that crush anymore. You'll, you'll drop the bearing in there and uh, get it in the lock, turn it over and it'll just fall out. It, because it's been the center of it's been beat so hard from the crank that the outsides actually roll in and heat heat gets to them and makes them lose their crush this one is still in really good condition for what's happened to this motor that bearing is not that bad it's a little polished but that's probably from age and just abuse. The outer edges that are, of it are polished. And the natural color of the bearing is what's in the center there. It's really not not that bad. You know, the, I don't know. It's probably salvageable. I don't know that the rod is salvageable. So what were we saying? Oh, the, the thought was to buy another motor. He's got a line on another Type R motor and install that other Type R motor. It's, it's, a, it's a decent priced engine. And then squirrel this away in your garage until you have the money to have it sleeved. Go ahead and sleeve it bigger, sleeve it, you know, 84 millimeter or 85 millimeter. So you get that extra displacement and get a custom set of pistons for it and then send that cylinder head off to whoever repairs um, moon craters from broken valves. I don't know who does that. I haven't had to deal with that. I've never seen one this broken. I've never seen one that every cylinder caught some kind of mess from the destruction of the piston. The crank survived, the bearings survived, I think even the rod. I think even the rods were usable. But it has to come completely apart. Spend, you know, close to fifteen hundred bucks having it sleeved. It's a bad day to be a type R owner. It's not like all of our junk that you just go find another LS block or a my race car out there has a a, a CRV B twenty block that that hydrolocked. Yeah. Yep. That's I, like a what was it? The first engine I built for the CRX, you know, popped the block in that, bought another one for a hundred dollars from yeah. Savannah, West Virginia. Yeah, it's you nothing. Know. It's yeah. nothing. You but know, this, this is a different animal. This, this isn't a, a D15 V2. No. This is not an Integra LS. Nope. You know, you, this is a hard decision. I, I don't envy Dan Brown and the position he's in. Sorry, Dan.